Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. Now, I was called a racist in the comment section in one of our recent videos, and it kind of confused me. See, I don't consider myself a racist at all. I have plenty of friends from different backgrounds and races because I think it gives me a very unique perspective of the world. I'm in a relationship with a girl who's also a different race from me, and I love it. But what I am is a speciesist and pro-human. You see, I really can't stand a lot of the sentient species out there. I don't like Ewoks, for instance, or those blue bestiality-loving monkeys in Avatar. I do love dogs, though. They're, they're the best. Which is why Wookiees are cool, because they're basically giant dogs. But today, I want to talk to you guys about five species in Star Wars that are completely messed up and just wrong, and why, if you ever see one, you should rush to your local Imperial garrison and notify them. Alright, great. Let's start. Number one is the Kaminoans. Now, if you know your history about the Clone Wars, the terrible Jedi secretly went behind everyone's back to create a gigantic military that they could lead because they just wanted more power. But what we tend to forget is that these clones were actually human beings, just like you and me. Except they were born in the cruelest type of slavery, which is wrong because they're humans. See, according to legends, the aquatic world of Kamino was once a normal terrestrial planet, but after an ice age ended and something known as the Great Flood happened, most of the population was destroyed. Probably because they lacked the insight that humans did to build a giant boat and bring two of each type of animals on the planet into said boat. Clinging onto what landmass was left on Kamino, the Kaminoans began a strenuous program of selective breeding, genetics, and cloning in order to survive. In this process of trying to achieve perfection, they also lost their soul. Which is why the inside of their cities looked like an Apple store. But the thing is, the human clones they created were treated like products by these monsters. If a product was defective, they simply killed it, even if it was just a baby. When individuals lack empathy, have an uncontrollable ego, and the aesthetic taste of Apple, well, I consider them psychopaths. And when your whole species falls into this category, well then, we have a problem. Luckily, the Kaminoans would become traitors to the Empire, and would suffer the wrath of the 501st. Next up is the legendary near-human species known as the Inzati. They were almost identical to humans. Their only distinguishable physical traits were their gray skin, pig-like noses, and two tendrils that hung from their cheeks. But if we look a little bit closer at them, they were truly alien in almost every way. For one, the Enzati had no biorhythm, no heartbeat, no internal heat, and they can also live for several centuries. Naturally, you would think a species with such a long lifespan would be extremely cultured and intelligent. But no, the Enzati didn't care about things like expanding one's mind or partaking in the fine arts. They cared about only one thing, and that was sucking the soup out of everyone. It's hard to define what exactly is soup, but all sentient species have it. It's some kind of cerebral fluid that's tucked away in our brain. Some individuals have said that this is the physical manifestation of our luck or our memories. Others have said it's a form of the force. But regardless of what it is, the Nzati spend their entire lives hunting down other sentients so they can extract this life essence out of them. Essentially, they're parasitic vampires that can almost live forever and have spent their entire lives honing their abilities to hunt and lure prey into their lair so that they can suck the juice out of their brains. The Nzati are also a force-sensitive species and use a type of hypnosis to lure their prey in. Jedi who have observed this ability state it's essentially a form of force persuasion or manipulation. Once their prey was within their grasp, the Nzati would stick their cheek tendrils through the orifices in the victim's head and extract soup from their brain. Depending on the individual, an Nzanti could get one to several meals from one individual. Eventually, after feeding on them, the victim dies. Some scientists have said that Nzanti aren't evil, and that we can't hold them responsible for their actions because it's just the way nature made them. I'd say we take those scientists and feed them to a pack of Nzanti. The third group of scumbags we want to talk about are occasionally employed by the Galactic Empire. It doesn't mean they like them, though. I'm talking about the reptilian species known as the Trandoshans. These aliens are essentially walking and talking lizards. They have scales, claws, infrared vision, cold blood, and are even able to regenerate limbs after a Wookiee rips them off. What makes them so useful to the Empire is their natural ability and love for hunting. Trandoshan culture is built around the hunt. Legends say they believe in a god called the Scorekeeper, and whenever they appease or please the Scorekeeper, they get what's known as a Jagannath point. Points were awarded by doing things like capturing a Wookiee with a rare fur color and then skinning him, or killing a Wookiee who is a great warrior. The more points a Trandoshan had, the higher their rank in the afterlife would be. Some Trandoshans even kept game preserves where they let loose captives unharmed 
and hunted them like wild animals. Were they just hunting other aliens, I wouldn't really care, but occasionally the prey they used were actually humans. Which is unacceptable. In defense of the Empire, the Trandoshans were only hired to do things that no one else wanted to do, like bounty hunting or slaving. Talking about slaves, our next species loved slaves so much that they built an entire empire around them. We're talking, of course, of the Zagarians. These feline-like humanoids had a culture built around strength and the so-called natural order of things. The weak were oftentimes punished for their mistakes or even made into slaves or killed. Their society was dominated by a monarch, and beneath her were the nobility, many of whom served in the military. Another important part of Zagarian society was the slave guild. Members paid a fee to the guild and in return were given plots of land in the galaxy where they could harvest slaves from. Because a great deal of their economy depended on slavery, the Zagarians allied with whoever allowed them to continue their ways, whether that was the Separatist Alliance or Galactic Empire after it legalized slavery as a punitive measure. But on a positive note, they did prove to be a reliable source of slaves for Imperial labor camps. Zagarians were considered also less cruel and less likely to eat their slaves than the Huts and Trandoshans. The last species on our list is legendary as of now. They are the Yuzang Vong. Escaping their own dying galaxy, they arrived as conquerors. This highly religious species has a built-in system revolving around suffering and death. It's been said that they originally hailed from a living world, but they caused so much destruction on that world that they were permanently severed from the Force. And now they believe their only path to redemption was embracing pain. The Yuzang Vong's technology was biologically based. That means everything from their armor to intergalactic world ships were made out of organic matter. Most of their technology was not only terrifying and grotesque to look at, it was actually more efficient and powerful than anything the current galaxy had. They came to this galaxy to do several things, all of them terrible. One was to destroy all mechanical technology and the people who used them. In their previous galaxy, they had almost been destroyed by a race of sentient machines. They also wanted to create a new homeworld on Coruscant, which they terraformed with their biological technology into a nightmarish hybrid planet. And third, they wanted to enslave the inhabitants of this new galaxy and turn them into servants and soldiers. They even did some genetic experiments on Jedi in an attempt to turn them into Yuzang Vong. Legends even say that the reason why our great emperor built the Death Star in the first place was to prepare for these terrifying alien invaders. So guys, next time you walk into a cantina and that human across the counter from you is giving you a dirty look, just smile back to him. Instead of using all that anger and hate for negative things, Use it to do something positive. Discriminate against aliens and other species. Well guys, that's all we have for you today. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button. If you don't, I'll report you guys to the ISB and say you guys are rebels. Well, a special thanks to all you Patreon supporters out there. I like you guys because you're helping fund the channel. I like you because you're human. Thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.